know what I like? What's you know what I like? A What's guy that? who's in the national media who shows a little respect for our home team, the Atlanta Falcons. He does show respect, and that's James Palmer from the NFL Network. James, what's going on, man? Well, guys, I love that intro because I love the Falcons. I'm not going to lie. It's one of my favorite teams uh, to look forward to covering this year. I'm, I, not, I'm serious. This is how I feel. No, I saw the stuff on NFL Network. I guess it was last Thursday, and they were doing a segment on under-the-radar teams, and you feel with the moves we made in free agency will be one of those teams that people are sleeping on. I, I, I think the draft, the free agency, I, I really think – what maybe nationally people don't understand that, that ties all this together is the coaching staff. I mean, I don't know if people understand kind of how Arthur is respected as a play mm. designer uh, around the league. I mean, that he is very well respected. You know, one of the best things you can do, considering where the Falcons stood in terms of dead money and where they stood in terms of their roster the last few seasons, like they still, in my opinion, won every game they should have won. And, you know, now you start getting more talented, that group, that starts, that, that, that group of games starts increasing, right? The, the last thing you want is to have a staff that doesn't prepare you and you don't win the games you're supposed to win. They win every game they're supposed to win. They just didn't have the talent and they had the issues in terms of cap. Now that you're getting more talented in these things, I, I think Arthur and his staff really are much better than people think. And when you put your team in position to, to win all the games you're supposed to and then win the ones that, you know, are, are you're going to be in now, with a better roster, I think Arthur is a big reason why we should be excited about the Falcons. Yeah, it's a great point. Uh, I know that's Mike. That's how Mike and I feel. I, we've had right. this conversation, uh, and maybe we're too close to it. You know, to have the conversations we've had with Arthur Smith behind closed doors and to talk to him and to kind of get a feel for what he's truly thinking about this stuff. It's one thing when you don't have the talent, mm -hmm. James. Mm -hmm. You know this. When you don't have the players mm -hmm. or the horses, you can talk about it all you want. That's what the Falcons lacked. And now they went out and spent all this money and then you're drafting now who you feel like fits your system, I totally agree with you. I think he's shown that he can win with less. And I always said this, what happens when he gets more? Yep, exactly. And that's the thing. I mean, and, and when, you're always, when, you're, when you're building your roster the way Arthur does, which is, let's be honest, just a little bit different than the way some other teams value talent. What do they value? They value the middle of the field and they value size, mm -hmm. right? You can tell by when all those receivers were coming out and they had the first crack at them to go Drake Monday two years ago. They value size and they value versatility and they value the run game probably more than some of the way the other, these other teams are built. I, you go back to when he was calling plays in Nashville, which I, Vrabel was, is a big reason for the success. Mike Vrabel is a very, very good football coach and a great head coach. But what Arthur Smith was able to do with Ryan Tannehill and repeatedly win the division, obviously as Derrick Henry. And then you go and look at the way he's building this team now and this roster now, like, when I heard about his workout that he had with B. John Robinson, I was like, the Falcons are taking B. John Robinson. <laughs> like, yep. like, when I heard about that, it was about a month before the draft. He went out to Texas. He worked out B. John, and he, his mind just started going. Like, Arthur just started going, I can put him here. I can move him here. He can, he can. Most of that workout, guys, was working out B. John as a pass catcher. I mean, Arthur was like, I know he can run the ball, right? So he was like, let me see where I can put him on the field, these different spots I can I can put him in. And now you look like everybody's saying, well, they'll throw the ball a little bit more. Well, obviously they weren't going to throw the ball last year with, with right. Marcus as the quarterback. Now you have the ability, even when you say throw it a little bit more, there's still going to be a run first team. But now you just have the ability to find mismatches all over the field, which is what Arthur's great at, by not changing personnel because your guys can line up pretty much anywhere. Right. And I think that's going to be what I'm excited about, and I know what Arthur's really good at is, is putting these guys in different spots and not having to sub or, ch or change personnel and put defenses in a bind, and that's what you have to do in this league. It is a James Palmer guy from NFL Network here on the WadeFord.com hotline. And that's another thing, because he was injured last year, James, is uh, Kyle Pitts. And if Kyle Pitts can come back mm -hmm. and benefit to what you're talking about, the 22 personnel having two tight ends, although technically he's a quasi-wide receiver, mm -hmm. creates all sorts of mismatches. Exactly. And, I mean, you can, you can do things. Who knows Johnny Smith better than Arthur, right? That's, that's when he's had his most success, when he, when he played with Arthur. And, and now you can put him <laughs> in the backfield. Then you can put him in, in, in motion him, and then you can put Kyle in pretty much any other spot you'd like. You can put Bijan in any spot you'd like. You can put CP in pretty much a variety of spots. I think he's going to be interesting to see Nabby down near the goal line. He just has such, such a nose for the, for the end zone and, and that low red zone stuff. It just seems like they have the ability to just go, and I, I think Desmond is smart. I really do as a quarterback. And I think talent-wise, is he in that upper echelon? Probably not. But if he looks out there and goes – 
oh, now I have Kyle out here wide, and who's on him? And I have uh, – I, and, and I have Drake London out on the other side, and now the middle of the field is wide open. No, no linebackers staying with B. John Robinson if you put him in the slot. Like, all right, find, find my mismatch. And because of how they're built physically, I think they're going to have those mismatches. We're talking with James Palmer, guys, NFL Network reporter. Uh, we love his work. He does uh, great stuff. And, and if you get a chance to check him out, make sure you do. James, let's talk about Roger Goodell real quick. Mike and I were saying this. The owners apparently are going to give him an extension. Obviously, nothing is finalized. But Goodell 64, he says, I love my job. Mike and I are very critical about Roger Goodell and some of the things that have happened um, over the years, even though I think his job has gotten a lot easier because, as I said, he insulated himself and from, delegates now. from a lot of this, yeah. this, this stuff that harmed him earlier in, in his, his regime. But how do you view Roger Goodell? I mean, we see him, right, in the, bring on the booze at the draft, and he embraces all of this <laughs> stuff, right? And then you see guys around the league dapping him up and hugging him, and, and then you go, well, wait a minute. Is he really liked as much as we think he is? Well, everybody's making a lot of money right now. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I don't think the owners are all that upset with which what you look what's happened financially over the last you know couple of years with the gambling deals that have done what it was the league have six uh, gambling partnerships right now with the TV rights deals with everything that just happened with NFL Red Zone. Uh, going to Apple and YouTube TV, paying for what they did for Sunday Ticket. Um, everybody's making as, about as much money as you can make in, in a professional sports league. I mean, it's, uh, it's almost unprecedented, really, what, what they're hauling in now in terms of the popularity of the NFL. Um, obviously, there are always going to be qualms because there is a lot going on. And, and it is, like you said, his job's easier. I do think the one thing that, that him and, the, and, and everybody at 345 Park has to keep an eye on is what we saw with these suspensions in the offseason with the Lions and everything in terms of gambling. And he addressed that a little bit today at the meetings in, in the spot that they are in as a league. And that's, that's really the one giant thing they're going to have to overcome, that and – some of these rule changes in terms of safety. Uh, outside of that, you're right. It, 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 it probably has gotten a little bit easier. But as of right now, I mean, everybody's making a boatload of cash. Uh, and I think uh, that keeps a lot, of people, a lot of people happy. And if that's happening, change doesn't seem like something you encourage uh, if you're an owner. No, look, he gets paid the big bucks, James, to draw the fire. And like any CEO for a successful company, they're making the big bucks. He, he, he reaps the benefits. James Palmer from NFL Networks with us. I want to go around the division real quick. We already talked about the Falcons. And obviously the Saints are getting a little more respect because people know Derek Carr. Whatever he is, he's a bigger brand than Ritter. What do you think the Saints are going to do this year? I, you know, I liked the Saints actually a little bit last year. Um, and, and I think things are definitely different there without Sean Payton. They are. And that's, that's an offensive mind that just, I don't care who you bring in, that's not really replaceable um, in terms of what he can scheme up and what he can do. I think Derek's a really good, really good player. I think the start of the season is important for them, what happens. I think, I think drafting a back was important because the, the certainty of, of Alvin Kamara is kind of up in the air with the suspension possibly looming. I think the most important guy to watch with the Saints this offseason, to me, during OTAs, during minicamp, is Michael Thomas. Like, at one point, the best receiver, considered the best receiver in, in, in football possibly. He was playing with Drew Brees. He's had the injuries now. He's been out for, what, like roughly almost three years now? Right. What does Michael Thomas bring to them? I think Chris Olave is a really, really good player, had a really good rookie season. I think these pieces around Derek Carr are, are better than what he's had, in all honesty. But I think the defense is talented but old. I think that's a part that we're going to keep an eye on because all of a sudden you look at a couple of those key guys on that defense, especially down the middle of that defense, are getting older. And an injury or two that lingers longer than it would have a few years ago could hurt them defensively. But I think they're still pretty, pretty talented team on paper. I'm just curious, like I said, on paper, because of Michael Thomas, because of the age of some guys, and because it's a new quarterback coming in, there's some continuity there. But then there's a lot, there's a lot you have to get answered this offseason. Well, it's going to be uh, an interesting offseason, to say the least. Now that everything is settled down, you kind of know what these teams look like. Um, and mm -hmm. everybody knows, you know, what, what they got coming to camp, at least right now. And I, I think more than anything, when you talk about the divisions, right, and I just want to get your opinions on this, Jesse Palmer, our guest, where oh, – excuse me, James Palmer, excuse me. Where's the toughest yeah, division? Yeah, really good looking. It's all right. I get it. Well, he is. That, <laughs> all, what, what, that, banging, that, that banging in the back got me uh, distracted. Where is the <laughs> – Some house repairs, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got you. What is the toughest division, in your opinion? We talk a lot about our division. We were talking about the quarterbacks in it. What's the toughest division in your opinion? Man, I, you know, the, 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 the sexy pick right now that everybody's kind of going with 
uh, obviously, is the AFC East, right? I mean, the Dolphins took a big jump, the Bills are there, and now Aaron Rodgers is in the division. I mean, obviously, everybody takes takes a look at that division and goes, man, like, that that's the one I want to watch. Um, but sneakily, like, <laughs> I think the AFC North it can be really tough this year. Um, if Deshaun Watson starts playing like the way we saw him play before all of this happened uh, in the lengthy time that he was away from football, Cleveland's good. I think Joe Burrow is absolutely out of this world. And then with Lamar coming back with the weapons that he got added. Um, and then Pittsburgh actually played well down the stretch. Um, so I, I do think that's the division that I'm, I'm excited to spend some time in, honestly. Um, but I do know everybody's kind of looking at the East as kind of the sexy move now with right. the way the Dolphins played uh, when Tua was healthy, and then Aaron Rodgers, and obviously the Bills are great. So I think those are the two, but I just think I think people are sleeping on the, the North a little bit just because of the small sample size we had from, from, from Deshaun uh, in his return that maybe people started question Cleveland a little bit. And I know, James, uh, they're going to be following Aaron Rodgers. They're, again, they're, they're, they're focused on his calf right now up in New York. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is missing some, oh, some work. But, it was mayhem today but, in New York. But yeah. are you buying it? I mean, we, we were saying, I mean, look, we know what his, rep, his resume is, but at crunch time the last two seasons, he hasn't had it. Will he have it with the Jets? That's, that's what we're all wondering, right? I mean, like, it, it's funny. We've seen these unbelievable regular seasons. I've covered games in Lambeau. I was there when the Bucks beat him in, in, the, in the championship game. And, and does he have now the ability with, with more talent than probably he's ever had? I just say talent, right, at the skill positions um, than he's really ever had. But there's still some other things that need to be, need to be answered. I, I, I think he's still incredible. I talked to some of their coaches last week about what they've seen from him. And they've seen – a different guy than what was playing at the end of Green Bay. When I say that, I mean, like, he didn't show up for those two rookie receivers last year in the offseason. He wasn't there for Dobbs and, and Christian Watson. And people are curious what those guys would have been like at the start of the season if he would have spent the offseason with, with, with both those young guys. Remember, both those guys came on late. They had really yep. slow starts. And there's a lot of funny people around the league. They're like, it's because Aaron wasn't there. Right now, he's there with everybody, and, and there's kind of a different vibe with him, and he's back with Hackett, which I know it didn't go well in Denver, but those two together are, are really, really close in terms of how they build things and how they see things football-wise. Now, you just got to make sure, yeah, in the biggest moments, you, you can make the biggest plays, um, and in the AFC now, <laughs> it's almost like, hey, man, like your question, like, will he be able to do it? Well, now you're going to have to do it, like, multiple times during the regular <laughs> season and multiple times throughout the playoffs – um, because of how the AFC is built. So, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a huge gamble they made, but everybody's looking at, like, you know, the Bucks did it with Brady, and they got a Super Bowl out of it. I mean, they're mm. screwed financially for the next forever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, exactly. But, but, they got, but they got the ring. Yeah, and that's all that matters. By the way, what you get, man? New bathroom? What are you doing in yeah, the house? What's going on? What are you doing? No, listen to this, guys. Uh, we're getting – this is a huge lawsuit issue, uh, you know, that we're going through here with the out exterior of all of our homes, like 150 homes all getting the exterior of their homes ripped off because people had, like, mushrooms growing in their walls because oh, of how the stucco was installed. Oh. So this has been going on, no lie, for nine months I've had no exterior. Wow. Oh, dude. And oh, talk about, you know, kids not being able to decorate for – Halloween for Christmas. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's been a nightmare. My wife is ready to like move every other day. She's like, "We're out of here. We're out of here." But uh, <laughs> it's going up right now. Of course, so we're can't, finally getting can't, a we're finally getting a home. Can't sell yeah. it because it's kind of a fixer up right now. <laughs> oh yeah, like, I'm not, like what do you put a for sale sign out right now in front of this? They're like, I'm like, I swear, there's an end date to this. So yeah, <laughs> well, hang um, in there, brother. That's great, James. Yeah. We appreciate, appreciate you, it. James Palmer, guys. Yeah, NFL guys. Network. Take care, brother. Thank you. Take it easy, guys. <laughs> See ya. Great stuff on the Falcons, guys.